Okay, looks like we've had another incident here. You know, this is what occurs when you have a nation that has basically lost control of itself and sadly you have alliances that's basically falling apart here in America. You can see in 20 and 17 um, there was almost 4,000 threats to Congress or to members of Congress. 2018, 5,200. 2019, 6,000, almost 7,000. 2020, 8,600. 2021, 9,600. So what you have here is a consistent pattern of about a thousand more threats per year that's been that way now for the past five or six years. And one has to ask the simple question in seeing this pattern, is this pattern going to continue to get worse or is it going to get better? And now, a lot of these people will tell you that you're fixing to listen to that a great deal of these people, actually the way that they put it, all of them are, uh, are, radical, are radicalized and they think that violence is, is going to be the answer towards trying to, to uh, eradicate this, uh, this government that is totally out of control. Any country that resorts to um, basically callousing violence against their own countrymen that's running public services is usually a sign towards a collapse of that particular government. Don't matter if it's an American government, don't matter if it's a Cuban government, don't matter if it's a Russian government. These are all tattletale signs of what is to occur. Now, I've said before, and I'll say again, because I don't wish nobody no harm whatsoever. But whenever you get to analyzing my particular life, how that I have had false charges placed up into my life, beginning with Homeland Security in 1991, and whenever you get to looking at all the other patterns towards what's occurred out in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma with my life, towards what's occurred in my life right here in Weekly County, Tennessee, in Martin, Tennessee, towards me passing out Bible literature. And then whenever I come back home in 2014, within a three-year period of being attacked, basically uh, hunted like an animal to the point that the courts uh, here in the area didn't, didn't care about what was going on in our lives down here on the edge of Weekly County. But if you get to looking at how that they uh, misproportionalized that in which what I was trying to help them with up in Kentucky, I can honestly say that all these occurrences could not have happened to a better group of people in exchange towards how that they tried to bury me by using the same content towards me threatening one of their United States presidents. That I never did. Haven't threatened a governor. Haven't threatened a mayor. Haven't threatened a sheriff. Hadn't threatened no deputies. But now, to read their propaganda about me, I've done all the above. So, whenever I sit back and say it couldn't have happened to a better group of people, I mean that very, very conservatively, and I also mean that disheartably because it breaks my heart to see my own country, my own nation falling apart like this, basically in regards towards our alliances falling apart. 
if you would please listen to this because I found it to be a bit more so than just sad. It's actually threatening. They talk about uh, they talk about a female over in Arizona. Whenever I come back from California in 2012, by thinking that I was going to come back to a home church, First Baptist Church there in Phoenix, Arizona, off of the uh, Camelback Road, same church that John McCain was members of, state senator. I was greeted by FBI and U.S. Marshals in telling me that I was not welcome to come to church under any means, and if I was to even begin to return, that I would be arrested immediately on the spot. Said that the church had become a soft target because of that, what had went on down in in uh, Arizona. But because of the lavish, I don't even know if that's the right word or not, because of the ludicrous, unlavished material that was put out about me, it brought enough concern after me speaking to their minister before actually attempting to come back to my home church after me becoming members out there the first time that I was out there. I was told the odds of me being welcomed at my own church was probably going to be slim to none pertaining to the advice coming from the primary minister at that time that told me if you had any sense, you probably just need to go ahead and just uh, find you another church somewhere else, Dennis. Well, me being hard-headed like I was, I went ahead and attempted towards going over there because that well, it was my home church. And, of course, as soon as I pulled up into the lot, I was greeted by about five or six men. Uh, the administrator come out that's in charge of that particular facility off Camelback Road. He said, Mr. Jackson, we know all about you. We have read up about you. We consider you being somewhat of a threat. This is considered to be a soft target because of various political officials that come to this church. We're not asking you to leave. We're telling you to leave. If you come back to this church, you will be arrested for criminal trespassing, even though you are a member of of the First Baptist Church in Phoenix, Arizona. He didn't stutter about it. He didn't hesitate about it. That was his words pertaining to me. Even though I had never been violent in my entire life, other than, other than promoting the ideal of becoming violent with a Luciferian Lucifer in a fleshly body that is now walking around over in Saudi Arabia, that masterminded 9-11, that basically butchered an American journalist, and etc., These are the complications that has befallen up into my life, and I have never, ever wished any harm or hurt upon any president, vice president, senator, congressman, any government official, or any subservient official, like a preacher, a teacher, uh, a Sunday school teacher, uh, a fireman, a first responder an MLS director, any of the above, anybody that works social services out in the public, 
I don't go around threatening. I put out warnings. Yes, I believe that every church in the world should be opposed to not only the Antichrist, the spiritual Luciferian Lucifer, but also the physical Luciferian Lucifer. And if you're not opposed to his actions, and if you don't support the same ideology as the Heavenly Father supports towards bringing this evil demonic entity into justice pertaining to the great white throne judgment, I question the authenticity of one's relationship with God. I don't care if you're Joe Olstein, Billy Graham. I don't care if, if you're Jimmy Swaggart. I don't care if you're whoever. If your demeanor isn't towards wanting to eradicate evil from the very axis of this planet, if your intent or motive is not the same, I question the authenticity of your relationship with the Heavenly Father. Because so many people has been injured, harmed, hurt, uh, given the short, short feet, uh, given the short hand, uh, not given a fair hand, because so many people has been misunderstood, and plus because of what happened in regards towards Donald J. Trump. January, January the 6th, 2021, we're only seeing an explosion. Same word I used in Barton, Tennessee in 2005. We're only seeing an explosion of violence set out in people's lives pertaining to a pattern that is now obviously undeniable. I have said, and I'll say again, we are under an invasion, a spiritual invasion, with all this rank and all this sin and all this uh, uh, violence. We are under an invasion. We're being in invaded by these spiritual uh, demonic forces that are entering into these people that is causing all this in addition to the gun violence, in addition to the suicides, in addition to everything else. What we're seeing is alliances right in front of our very eyes that's being rattled, torn, and taken down one pillar at a time. Who do we have to blame for this? The blame game starts in 1988 with Homeland Security and Ronald Reagan's administration. And they desperately, desperately wanted to ruin my life so badly that they was willing to promote and get other people to promote, such as a 911 dispatcher in Wheeling, West Virginia, to say that I was on my way to say that I said that I was on my way to take out George Walker Bush on a 911 recording, but yet now whenever we played it, there wasn't nothing indicating any type of threat, and, and the judge supposedly bought into it hook, line, and sinker whenever the 911 dispatcher gave a reasonable explanation of how come that wasn't on there, and his explanation was, well, Your Honor, it must have been equipment failure. Equipment failure? Wasn't that convenient that every other word lined up with the very tape recorder, a mini cassette tape recorder that I had going at the time towards putting it against the ear of the phone? That way, not only could you record my voice, but also the voice of the 911 dispatcher was being recorded whenever my attorney played that recording to the front, to the back, in front of a federal courts. And then whenever the 9-1 dispatcher rewounded his tapes that they always record, it lined up perfectly. 
every rattle, every cough, every word, every iota, either by me or the dispatcher himself, and there was nothing on my tape that indicated any type of mechanical failure or a threat. There was nothing on the 911 dispatcher tape that indicated any type of a threat, but yet no, these people took six months out of my life because they did not want me to fulfill my purpose pertaining to me being called of God to help to orchestrate the Windmill Ministries missions. Please listen to this. It is so, so heartbreaking. What are we looking at here, Ben? I think what we're looking at here, Chris, is that the discourse around politics is no longer about differences. Look, Nancy Pelosi has been attacked for many years, but it's one thing, you know, 15 years ago when those attacks are about, she's a tax and spend San Francisco liberal. That's not the kind of thing that might motivate someone to commit an act of violence. Where we are today is these people are a threat to our way of life. These people are, are radicals who are against America and everything we stand for, or these people are engaged in some conspiracy theory. When you move into that space, uh, and we've seen this again, I've seen this in other- Not all them people. Not all them people are, are in the category that he just said. There's a lot of people that are doing what they're doing out of retaliation because they themselves has been hurt, burnt, lied upon, misjudged, persecuted for crimes that they didn't commit, or they know of somebody that has been mistreated by the United States government, in addition to seeing all the other failures that our government has now placed upon to its own citizens that basically our children is going to have to inherit if, if they can't straighten this mess out pertaining to us being trillions and trillions of dollars in debt. Um, people are lashing out. There was actually a group of people and the group of people January the 6th that thought that they was doing the proper and right thing up until the actual rioting happened and the smoke and the, and the violence and the bloodshed started happening. Up until then, there was a group of people in that group of people that actually thought that they was doing the patriotic right thing. Why did they think that they was doing a patriotic right thing? It's because our government officials have failed us. And this is what you get whenever you have a dissolving government that is 30 plus trillion dollars in debt, violence on every level, jobs that has been moved overseas, a country that's been imitated by guns and drugs. You know, I was just thinking the other day, for some reason, a band member come to my come to my mind pretending a cheap trick. I don't know, probably you'd have to be about my age or a little older to remember cheap trick. They was a heavy rock and roll group at the time. But I got to thinking, how in the world did they get that name? Cheap Trick. And then it dawned on me, pertaining to a prostitute doing tricks. Most prostitutes are considered cheap. So if you put the two of them together, Cheap Trick, it rung a bell at that time during the 70s, 60s, 70s, and throughout the 80s, pertaining to it being fitting. It was a fitting title that at that time people was attracted to because it was a cheap trick. Hey, let's go listen to Cheap Trick. And there's lots of names where your rock and roll groups has imitated this country like that, that has, that has you know, like the Grateful Dead or... Um, Metallica, or or uh, Ozzy Osbourne, Pink Floyd, Rolling Stones, 
sticks. Foreigner. These names had purposes during the time that these groups started. And it was based upon the culture at that time that was considered acceptable. You didn't hear no rock and roll groups called Michael's Angels. You didn't hear no rock and roll groups that was named after Methuselah or Moses or Elijah. You didn't hear no rock and roll groups titled that way. You know why? Because they was just the very opposite in what they stood for and who they stood for. And now all that has come full circle with their back masking and all their possession of all their drugs and all their sex and rock and roll and all their ludicrous talking and singing and acting like a bunch of wild people. Now it's come full circle towards haunting the American people. This and other instances of radicalization around the world that leads to violence, when it becomes existential to people, when they are told that someone is a threat to your very identity and that the deepest held beliefs you have, that's when you have this kind of uptick in threats. And so you can trace very directly the radicalization of the discourse over the course of the last five years since around the 2016 election to where we are today. And there's no reason to think that those threats won't turn into actual situations of violence. There's way too much tolerance of this stuff. There's way too much dismissing of things. Often what happens is there's a shock when an event like this happens, but two weeks later people are asked about it and they say, well, that's some nutcase and uh, we're moving on. No, this is not just, uh, obviously this is an isolated individual, most likely. We'll learn more obviously from the press conference as to whether he had any accomplices or, or support. But I think we also have to recognize that the phenomenon that is producing this incident is not going away. And indeed, it's getting worse. And it's it's an environment. It's a sickness. It's just like a cancer. It's spreading. And instead of it getting better, it's getting worse. And we as a society are becoming callous to it to the point that we just kind of flip it off like, oh, well, another one bites the dust. Another one bites the dust. Another one bites the dust. I think that was part of the lyrics of, the, of a song at one time. I don't forgot now what group it was. This is an ongoing, developing, worsening, domesticated, exploding event. I'm going to use that word again, explosion. An explosion of violence. An acceleration of violence. Just like in 2005, I used that same word whenever I was handing some Bible material to an individual that worked at a Martin convenience store and told him that there was going to be an explosion of controversy in my life, and in which it was, and that I was liable to wind up on the Channel 6 News, in which I did, pertaining to the event that happened in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. So all of my predictions, from the Mississippi River, to a bloody road ahead, to electrical disturbances, to now leading to where we are today, an explosion of violence towards people becoming radicalized. And I know that the media and the government would like to convince everybody in America, well, it's all these nut jobs' fault. They're coming out of the woodwork from everywhere, and, and, and they're just a bunch of idiots. And they don't really serve a purpose other than the fact that they're eradicalized. Well, you know, that, that, that would be one good way of, of looking at it, providing that it was true. And it's not true. 
And the reason why that we know that it's not true, because there was a time whenever farmers, everyday people, that didn't have nothing to do with guns and violence and didn't have nothing to do with the military, had to rise up during the Revolutionary War and basically was forced to have to become radicalized, which I guess if the same bunch of people was operating the situation back then as was today, they'd probably look at them and call them terrorists. They would call the American people that formulated militia before the military was ever formulated over here in America, they would call them people terrorists today. And that was not their concept. Their concept was to get out of the rule of a dictator, somebody similar like like uh, uh, poisonous Putin or even uh, the prime minister of China or whatever, or Cuba or wherever. That was their primary goal was to get out of that type of rule. It was not to become a radicalized. It was not to become violent. We're talking about farmers. We're talking about mothers. We're talking about family men. We're talking about people that had probably never picked up a gun to use it other than possibly to gain some sort of food for their family to survive. So whenever the media or the government continues to keep spewing out that everybody is radicalized and all this stuff is because of a bunch of nut jobs, they need to stop and evaluate the wording that they're saying and they need to figure out that people like myself has figured out that this is not all about a bunch of nut jobs. Something is going on, has went on, and is still going on in America that obviously a great deal of people are either concerned about or objectionable to, and this is the response. Now, I'll have people that will immediately demonize me because of them hearing what I'm saying, especially those that are associated with law enforcement or associated with any type of state, local, or federal government. They'll immediately peg me towards, oh, that's that guy. Oh, that's that guy. Oh, we already compartmentalized him. He's a nut job. No. I'm a dedicated, loyal Christian that believes in the Bible fully and wholly, and I have put out to the letterhead that the time has come for not only the spiritual Antichrist, but the Luciferian Lucifer pertaining to the fleshly, physical, homo, homo sapien that is now walking around with two legs, two feet, ten toes, two arms, two hands, and ten fingers, and a head and a body is now walking around up onto this planet that the time has come for him to surrender, being a mouthpiece for the Heavenly Father. Not a mouthpiece for me. Not even a mouthpiece for the Windmill Ministries missions. Because if I was going beyond the call of duty in speaking for my own self or speaking for the ministry's sake, I would be out of tune with the Heavenly Father. What I speak of is of the Heavenly Father towards the doom and the gloom that this Antichrist spirit formulated thousands plus years ago towards eradicating this radical figure. And, you know, you can say whatever you want to say, but it leads back into what the president of the NRA uh, uh, establishment uh, put out for for an NRA logo for a long, long time, which the only way to defeat a bad person with a gun is a, with is with a good person with a gun. Well, that only works as long as the good person with the gun is actually licensed, committed, and dedicated 
of using that gun towards stopping that bad person with that gun. Everybody, the point that I'm trying to make is this. Everybody cannot be looked upon as being a radical. I realize that the things that happen to various uh, political leaders in the past, especially uh, those that obtained either injury or death, was very, very uncalled for, and as far as I'm concerned, should have never, ever come to that. It's one thing to debate one another. It's one thing to disagree to disagree with one another. It's one thing if you want to get into a screaming contest with each other, but you should never promote actual physical violence. But you have to look deeper than just the normalization of all this, and you've got to start figuring out what is actually motivating these people how come they're lashing out the way that they're lashing out? And I'm sure a great deal of it's got to do with drugs. I'm sure a great, du du great deal of it's got to do with fame. I'm sure a great deal of it's probably got to do with sur surrounding circumstances and, and people that's actually a nut job. Probably 80, I'm going to say probably 75 to 80% fits underneath that category. But not all. There are people that engaged in January the 6th that I truly believe that they was, they was under their own convictions of doing the right, proper thing because they actually felt like the lies that Donald Trump had told them was the truth and that they was going up to the Capitol to try to straighten out a mess and not create one. And I've said this all along, and I'll continue to say this about Donald J. Trump. He had the right ideal towards draining the swamp. He just used the wrong method. He used the wrong method in achieving what he wanted to achieve. If he was going to go that route in becoming radicalized and radicalizing a group of people, it shouldn't have been a half-hearted ordeal. The only way to do something like that is to fall in the line towards total violence as far as war towards one group of people over conquering another group of people. His group of people did not go to that extreme towards them going in there with missile launchers and hand grenades and, and, and actually killing congressmen and, and bringing death and destruction to the, to the parties of, of the United States government in a violent physical form. They did give the impression of wanting to do that, but because Homeland Security was smart enough and because they uh, deviated from the building and they went down into the into the uh, lower parts of the of the building, where where all the uh, tavern or can canyons or whatever you want to call them, underground subway systems are, uh, they basically uh, eliminated that type of violence that was happening to the actual government officials. Now there was still violence. There was still people that died. There was still people that got injured. People that got gassed, people that got poisoned, people that had stuff thrown on them, people that, that, that are still to this day going through uh, psychological um, post-traumatic stress disorder because of all that. Don't get me wrong. It was bad. It was very, very bad. But as far as the government itself, the officials in the government on January the 6th, as far as I know, did not nobody actually receive even so much as a scrape. It may have affected them psychologically to some degree, but as far as physically, I don't think nobody actually got got uh, brutalized physically in January 6th deal. It's directly tied to the way in which people are living in information systems in this country that radicalize them uh, to, to commit acts of violence. It's, it's incitement, and incitement leads 
to what we're seeing here. And when you look at the numbers, I mean, just the sheer numbers, Frank Faglusi, um, 435 members of Congress, and we, we're approaching maybe 10,000 threats in a single year. How does law enforcement separate what's real, what's not real? Obviously, you look into everything, but a, a, a misstep, a misjudgment. Hell, not only can they not pinpoint the differences between what's pho uh, phony and, and, and what could be or what is just absolutely prank in, in regards towards it actually being violence, they actually make up violent suggestions and, and moment, uh, Indian, um, Indian, uh, Indian does on people such as myself towards trying to purposely bury them. You got the blind leading the blind here. And whenever you have a organization working for the United States government pertaining to Secret Service that are willing to do people's lives the way that they've done me, and I'm sure that I'm just one out of probably thousands that has had some sort of direct link with the federal government pertaining to Homeland Security Secret Service. I'm sure that I'm just one of thousands that has got bruised, that has got stained, that has got falsely accused, that has gotten um, brutalized or victimized by this particular organization. Now, some of it may have been legitimate. It may have been the only way of shutting these people down. And it may have been that that was the only way that that that's, uh, that the Homeland Security Secret Service could actually fulfill their duties is by going ahead and convincing a judge or whoever that this person was the way that that person was. And they may have deserved to get off of the streets that way. I don't know. I'm sure each independent case is, is handled independently. I can only verify towards what's happened in mine, and I can only verify that if it's happened to me, the way that it's happened to me, I'm pretty sure that it's probably happened to others to the point that they feel like that they just got the raw end of the deal. They got the short end of the stick. So whenever I say what I say, that it couldn't have happened to a better group of people, I don't mean that I wanted that to happen. Not even close. What I wanted was to be reverenced in, in the fact that the Heavenly Father had given me this calling going all the way back 30 plus years ago and that the first seal had been opened and that it was time for Satan to surrender and to see a revival that would manifest itself in, in a loving, gentle, supernatural, spiritual way to the point that we would actually see peace and utopia, a, 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 a revolution, that would lead to that in the end time days. And obviously to this day, I still say they didn't want. They did not want a jubilation type peace. They wanted a fake peace. They wanted a generic peace. They wanted a, a uh, they wanted a phony peace is what the American people wanted. Kind of like going to the drugstore and instead of paying a big dollar for your pharmaceutical drugs, we'll get get the uh, get the other kind, get the aftermarket. Kind of like ordering a fender for your car. Instead of getting the genuine fender, maybe you can save $150 by getting an aftermarket fender. That's what the American people has bought into. They rather have something fake and phony they rather have generic or aftermarket sweet and low than they would the true deal and we have fallen prey to that and because of that we're seeing these events only materialize and grow worse the consequences can be significant 
A great point. Uh, one of the very first things that will happen after an incident like this is they'll run the, the subject's name through all the databases, federal, state, local. And I, I've been part of things like that. And, and you just cross your fingers, Chris, that his name is not already known to you and that you missed something. But I have to tell you, in this threat environment that you just laid out with regard to the stats, Everybody is stretched very thinly. We learned in the aftermath of January 6th that the Capitol Police are underfunded and grossly understaffed. And so you do miss things when that happens. And now this extended threat environment well beyond the Washington Beltway, where field offices are open in the, in the uh, hometowns of the, uh, of the representatives. And there are traveling details increasingly with more and more members of Congress. They simply can't do it all. And there has to be increased partnership with the city police departments, with the FBI, with the Secret Service. Um, they will tell you they are stretched to the max right now. And when you're talking about the person who is second in line to the presidency, right after the vice president, the Speaker of the House's residence, thought has to be given not only to increasing that security around the residence, but also to expanding more security to high-profile members of Congress. So if we can, let's talk a little bit about Jake what the conversations have been and where you think they're going in terms of Capitol Hill. And I think um, Ben made a really good point, which is, you know, Gabby Giffords, for a lot of folks, that, that brought to mind that... Gabby Giffords was the one that got hit by, by a violent act in Arizona, Tucson. And give or take about three, two or three months, in 20 and 12, whenever I come back, to Arizona I wasn't asked I was told stay away from this building stay away from this church or you will suffer the consequences on account of it in other words they had already prejudged me they had already condemned me and because of all the BS that was out there circling around my name because of that in which what happened up here in Martin, Tennessee in 2005, that in which what happened in Western Kentucky in 2007, and that in which what occurred in my life in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma in 2009, it was haunting me to the degree that now I couldn't go to churches. It was coming into my workplace. I didn't have no life whatsoever because of people misjudging me or condemning me. And of course, whenever I moved back here in 2014, basically all hell busted loose in my brother and my life simply because of me coming back to Northwest Tennessee because of all the anti-Semitism type seeds that had been planted and that had manifested themselves with ludicrous lies and and basically people uh with their with their stereotype imaginations uh just growed it uh grossly growed it all out of proportion to the degree that I was a monster down here and I needed to be eliminated. I needed to be run out of town. And they were so stupid and blind the ones that took part in all this didn't understand or realize that they was the ones that was violating me, not my brother and I violating in them. Every incident that occurred happened on this corner. And still to this day, other than me driving down the road down there in O'Brien, down there by the old Baptist church, and an idiot decided to, uh, his sons decided to either shoot at me or he decided to run me down, and uh, I thought he was going to get violent with me. I really did, but hopefully he didn't. I mean, I'm glad that he didn't, but these people was actually hunting me, stalking me, not me stalking them. But to give you an insight towards the powers of Satan coming down in great wrath, these people, I guess, convinced uh, the judges and the courts up here in Dresden, Tennessee, that it was my brother and I that was instigating all this, even though all the cases was happening 
in which my attorney, uh, I don't forgot now his name, there in Martin, Tennessee, younger or, or, or yeah, younger that we had hired, he'd already done brought it up to the judge, Your Honor. All these incidences are happening at either 430 Beach Grove Road or 291 Thompson Road. It didn't dawn on them. They could have cared less. They was being influenced by the lies and the deceit and the garbage that was coming out of their minds and coming out of their hearts. So the prosecuting attorney, Tommy Thomas, Mike Wilson, Tommy Moore, Judge Pence, and all these local townsmen around here, it couldn't have happened to a better group of people towards their system now collapsing right in front of their very eyes. They have brought this shame and indignation and condemnation upon to themselves and upon to their children and their children's children. They didn't want to listen to what the messenger had to say 30 plus years ago. It was much simpler to look at the glass towards it being half empty versus half full. They was more concerned in the prophecy where it says that they shall kill one another than they was concerned towards taking peace from the earth. They took things out of perspective. And because of it, it has put us where we are today. But that was while she was doing constituent services. They were, she was out in a parking lot. I think about Steve Scalise. I covered that story as well. He was. Let's go forward here. Let's try to get over this. See what this, see where this is all going to go. A lot of back talk. Been following all of this as it's been unfolding. Jake, what can you tell us? Well, uh, Chris, at this hour, we know that as of 2.27 a.m. Pacific time this morning, police responded to the 2600 block behind me, uh, which is the home, of course, of Nancy and Paul Pelosi, because an intruder was in the home. That intruder, according to sources uh, from the investigation, uh, wielded a hammer and injured uh, Paul Pelosi, the speaker's husband. Uh, he has since been transported to Zuckerberg Hospital, that is the big trauma center here in the city, uh, and is at this hour supposedly in surgery. Uh, the extent of his injuries are not yet clear. We are, of course, waiting for this press conference where we'll hopefully find out more about the suspect who is in custody, but sources do tell us that this was a targeted attack. We have also been seeing agents not just of the San Francisco Police Department, but also of the Capitol Police and of the Federal Bureau of Investigation going in and out of the home here. Uh, so there seems to be certainly a, a multi-agency presence here uh, looking into this. But again, we are not sure the extent of Paul Pelosi's injuries. All we know is is that the attacker is in custody and that this was a targeted attack against the Speaker of the House, Chris. Jake Ward, I know you'll continue to update us as you see activity there. Let me bring in Ben Collins. Who is like I said, you can categorize everybody if you want to, like they are, towards being nut jobs or extremists. But something is happening in a country of unappropriateness that their citizens are starting to observe and look at that ever even began to create or manifest something on the level of January the 6th to begin with, in addition to the patterns of all this violence. Not everybody is a radicalized. Not everybody is a nut job. Whenever the people stood up against what they stood up against pertaining to King George III, they didn't want to do what they'd done. But they know that if they didn't do it, God only knows what was going to come next. And I'm sure that's some of the people's intent in lashing out the way that they're lashing out at government officials because they see that we're dealing with a broken system. We're dealing with a out-of-control train that that's pretty obvious that, that, that it's going to crash. It's just a matter of when. And people are lashing out 
towards trying to stop it from or preventing from it happening. And they really don't know nothing else other than to do, other than to lash out the way that they're lashing out in the response towards those that are trying to fulfill their patriotic duties. Because there are people in America that love America and are willing to die for America. And of course, if if that's taken out of out of context pertaining to either your media or various law enforcement agencies, you're going to take those very same people that's got such of a passion for their nation out of concern, and now all of a sudden you're going to paint them up and make them look like freaking monsters? Whenever the true monsters are the people that allowed for this to get in the shape that it's in? I was talking to a, a woman that worked for uh, the hospital agency up in um, Mayfield, Kentucky, a couple of days ago about how that half of the uh, sheriff's office was, was sick and, and uh, people was, was had COVID and stuff. And I, and I said, ma'am, it's really bad whenever, whenever our law enforcement agencies can no longer protect ourselves, can no longer protect their citizens that put them in these positions. And she looked at me and she said, sir, they can't even protect themselves. And that was a devastating thing to say, but it was truthful. Something out there and that out there is going to be found. The, I spent three years as a squad supervisor at FBI San Francisco. That, that field office's cyber capabilities are outstanding, as is SFPD. They will work together. They will get to the bottom of it. Uh, we are getting a lot of reaction, and, and that includes a lot. After the occurrence happens. But once more, how come we hire people? to protect people like this that can't prevent from it happening. It's a failure. It's just like the airplanes that they turned into missiles and they drove them off into buildings and killed 3,000 people. It's a failure. It's a broken system. Let's move forward. It irritates me. Whenever I see all this, all this bad stuff happening to innocent people's lives, it really does. It irritates me. Almost makes me fumigated. Almost make, makes me... Uh, Point here, look. This is an act of terrorism, and I, I just want to underscore see, what Frank... Terrorism, terrorism, terrorism. That's all they think of is terrorism, terrorism. They want to feed that down our heads. They want to brainwash us and making, them, making us feel like that we are the terrorists, that we are the monsters, because we care about our children and our and our and our children's children, and we care about their future, and we care about our country, and we care about our broken roads, and we care about our dilapidated bridges, and we care about our all the drugs and, and the illegals coming over to our country. They want to continue to treat us like we're all terrorism. And the people that should be looked upon as being terrorisms are the worthless people that could not provide safety and harmonious activities for their own citizens. And they just continue to keep pushing it, and keep pushing it, and keep pushing it, and the people keep eating it up more and more every day. There's no doubt what happened January the 6th was wrong. It was an embarrassment to this country but it was an embarrassment to this country that it was ever pushed to the, to the degree that it ever had to take place to begin with. We're not dealing with third world country. We're dealing with a civilized country. We're dealing with a country that had done already went through its civil war, that had already done established its, its uh, laws and bylaws and its policy makers and its stuff. So what actually motivated January the 6th. Was it really just Donald J. Trump and him alone towards spewing out all this information? Or was it a, a combination of both? Let's listen to what this gentleman here has got to say here. They're going to speak on, on behalf of what, what they're talking about here. I don't have a clue what, what they're going to say. I just, you know, I just want to look at all the truth and not just part of the truth. I want to put all the dots together and not just part of the dots together. I know how law enforcement and I know how the government and I know how the media would like to portray 
everybody as being monsters. I'm very aware of that. But what we have to be smart enough to figure out what is motivating people towards them coming out of the woodwork like this. Because not everybody is a freaking freak. Not everybody is possessed by the devil. There has to be something else, some underlying issues that we're not looking at that is actually motivating people towards them getting this way. Other than them being monsters. Could it be because our, our, our law enforcement and our government officials has let us down? Has anybody ever thought that through? Could it be that they know that this country has been basically uh, handed over uh, to, to basically uh, a, a house that has been left desolate? The blind leading the blind that has led us to this very, very despairable uh, place and time of where we're at right now? Let's listen. Um, it's a difficult conversation when it enters into our political discourse. Let's listen into the press conference. Mexico. I don't hear nothing. I don't hear nothing. Must be having technical difficulty. I don't hear nothing. All right, as we're sitting there having some audio issues there, let's take a look. I, I'm guessing that those folks are looking at the technical equipment and seeing exactly what's happening there. They may have been making announcements and not turning on the microphones yet. Let's listen again. Can, can we close that door so we don't get the noise? Okay, good morning. Okay, we'll go ahead and get started. Good morning, everybody. My name is Chief Bill Scott with the San Francisco Police Department. At approximately 2.27 this morning, San Francisco police officers were dispatched to the residence of Speaker Nancy Pelosi regarding an A-priority well-being check. When the officers arrived on scene, they encountered an adult male and Mr. Pelosi's husband, Paul. Our officers observed Mr. Pelosi and the suspect both holding a hammer. The suspect pulled the hammer away from Mr. Pelosi and violently assaulted him with it. Our officers immediately tackled the suspect, disarmed him, took him into custody, requested emergency backup, and rendered medical aid. The suspect had been identified as 42-year-old David DePappy. Mr. Pelosi and Mr. DePappy were transported to a local hospital for treatment. This is an active investigation currently being led by the San Francisco Police Department Special Investigations Division. We are working closely with our partners from the FBI, the U.S. Attorney's Office, the U.S. Capitol Police, and our district attorney here in San Francisco County, uh, D.A. Brooke Jenkins, and her team. The motive for this attack is still being determined. Mr. DePepe will be booked at the San Francisco County Jail on the following charges. Attempted homicide, assault with a deadly weapon, elder abuse, burglary, and several, several other additional felonies. Before I go any further, I'd like to thank the responding officers for their swift action this morning. Those San Francisco police officers are Officer Colby Wilness, Officer Kyle Cagney, and Sergeant Edmund Hoang. I'd also like to thank our emergency dispatcher, Heather Grimes, who's standing here to my left, for a really amazing job. For inquiries regarding Mr. Pelosi and his condition, we refer you to the statement issued by Speaker Pelosi's office this morning. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to our district attorney, Brooke Jenkins, for a few brief comments. 
And I, let me say in advance, this is what we know at this time. We will update you further, but we will not be able to take any questions after the statement. Thank you, Chief Scott, and I do want to commend the San Francisco Police Department for their immediate response uh, to this home and for um, swiftly making sure that Mr. Pelosi was okay and that the suspect was apprehended. Um, we are working closely with them right now with respect to the investigation and will proceed with the appropriate charges um, as things unfold, as, long as, as well as work with the U.S. Attorney's Office and our federal partners. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you all for being here. I know you may have. We'll update you when we get more. Do you know how he got into the house? That's it for right now. We're not going to take any questions. Thank you. We, our office will be issuing uh, news release very soon. But that's it for now. Thank you. And so a brief, uh, but a confirming press conference because we now know that the suspect who is in custody is 42 year old David De Pepe. Motive is still being determined, but Ben, I know that you have been looking into this. I know that you have been online already looking at, for his digital footprint. What do we know about him? Yeah, I mean, he's already posted lots of uh, conspiracy theories about transhumanism and global warming and uh, COVID-19 and all this stuff online on a blog. Uh, transhumanism is the belief that there are like aliens running the country and that they're trying to get us to inject ourselves with with COVID-19 shots, vaccines that are really computers. It's like a very confusing, complicated thing. Uh, but he is an OG conspiracy theorist uh, based on what we've seen so far. Um, we're obviously looking more into it. That's why I have my computer directly yeah. in front of me here. But, but yeah. nothing specifically mentioning any politicians or any political leanings or, oh, I mean, obviously, yeah, yeah. in so terms he, of it. Yeah, he mentions the, being the, black-pilled and being against, uh, in, in, and talking about the cover-up of pedophilia and stuff, like Pizzagate-style things. I think it's pretty clear where this is leaning so far. Okay, well, uh, obviously we also got a list, Frank, of possible charges here um, so far. They're talking about attempted homicide, assault with a deadly, a deadly weapon, elder abuse. It sounds like they have a pretty clear idea of where this is going. So we do for now, and I applaud SFPD for getting out quickly. So so many times we, we're seeking more information, and they, they got out what they could get out quickly, and kudos to them. However, conspicuous by their absence was federal officials, the U.S. attorney or, or an FBI official. And I, I'm not sure what to read into that, except we've already heard reporting locally, right, that the FBI is in and out of the residence. So they're clearly working this. It's just too early for them to conclusively say, this is ours. And clearly we heard the uh, SFPD official saying, Right now, it's theirs. It's it's SFPD, and that's that's okay. They're they're on top of it. They apparently need to learn much more. Ben's already laid out what's available here, but also don't be surprised in this for context for context here, and then having worked. And I want to verify also that what I said a while ago covered the analogy of about 85% of the people that does do violent harm to various people are people that basically are out of touch with reality. These are the people that, uh, for whatever reason, maybe he had a, a legenda, maybe he belonged to a group, maybe he had real strong uh, opinions about recourse towards everything that's going on, uh, but obviously he, like Donald Trump, uh, used the wrong tactics, if that be the case. Then again, this person may just be uh, a nut job that needed to be taken off streets anyway. So it can be a multiple of things, but still don't misunderstand what I'm trying to say here in regards towards something other than nut jobs is motivating this much violence in a country that obviously has displayed itself in many different ways towards being a failure to the safety and to the uh, well-being of their own citizens. And this is the reason why that they're lashing out this way. It's not just here in the United States. It's other places too as well. Whenever you can no longer provide adequate, uh, 
adequate everything in regards to your citizenship, you're going to have these type of problems. And it is a clear indication that something is going on in regards towards the system itself that is consequently not fulfilling its needs in regards towards its own people. Now, granted, nobody foreseen January, the, uh, not January the 6th, but nobody foreseen um, COVID looming around the corner, basically in towards about half of Donald J. Trump's presidency. And really and truly, if anybody should blame anything on anybody pertaining to the failure of not being elected twice, pertaining to Donald J. Trump, it shouldn't be his own citizens. It should be what went on over in China with the pandemic. Now, I don't know if that was a setup job pertaining to North Korea, setting China up towards bringing that into that lab and making it look like that it was purposely spilt or done intentionally, whatever. Um, we may not never get to the bottom of that, but if Donald J. Trump should be angry and peed off at anybody, it should be that in which what occurred whenever his when his whenever his uh, uh, pen pal lover kept writing back all these letters telling him again and again and again we have a Christmas present for you be expecting it well we see what the Christmas present was. The Christmas present has basically floored people's lives and countries to the degree of death and destruction and mayhem that has set out in areas that who would have ever dreamed we would be where we are right now pertaining to all the violence pertaining to all the violence. As I've said before, I'll say again, it couldn't have happened to a better group of people. Is this what I wanted? No, absolutely not. But they didn't render. They didn't uh, support or back something that was godly. And because of it, as far as I'm concerned, even to this day in the year 2022, the American people that claim that they want peace, these churches that claim that they're of God, but yet and all, they have ridiculed me, they have banded me, they have uh, degraded me, they have demoralized me, they have demonized me, and the whole time I was standing up for not only the... the um, the military degree and what our military stands up for pertaining to our pledge, but also standing up for the Lord Jesus Christ, combining both of them together in knowing that at one time we used to be a godly nation that went against ungodly people and ungodly situations. But when you have a government that their system has become so ungodly that now they have more favoritism towards the ungodly than they do the godly, then is whenever you have a nation that's going to be thrown off into a state of where we are right now towards seeing these occurrences again and again and again and again and again on the level that we're seeing them here in America to the point that now it's not e it's not even safe, uh, much less unproductive pertaining to the failure of our youth, but it's not even safe to walk out in most places and even enjoy life. And now it's coming into these people's homes, just like it was coming into my workplace, just like it was coming into my church sanctuaries of the people that I was uh, associated with during the time that I was out there uh, going from coast to coast and basically uh, working catastrophes and disasters and trying to help people and not hurt people.
Now it's coming into these people's lives. Just like it come into that senator's lives out there in uh, in uh, Arizona. Just like it's uh, come into other people's lives whenever that shooter was out, I guess, out by the White House and, and shot up a bunch of people. Just like whenever other types of violent activities has been going on, uh, including January the 6th. So you have to start asking yourself the simple question. Is this all about madness? Is this all about mental health pertaining to a sickness? Or could this actually be the results of what took place that shouldn't have never taken place in regards towards our United States government and Homeland Security? And is this only biblical Bible prophecy that the messenger, which is myself, that continues to keep spewing out that these are the results of wicked demonic spirits that it talks about in Revelations that will come down in great unmerciful wrath because it or he, this entity, knows that its time is short. So for those that get a hold of this material, I'll let them be the judge. You know, I know I know what's happened in my particular life. And I know that if it's happened in my life, pertaining to being falsely accused, pertaining to basically a, uh, a society that, that, that uh, turned its back on one of its leaders, on one of its uh, messengers, uh, I know what's going on. Now, rather not you want to believe that I know what's going on, well, that's up to you. But I know exactly what's going on because God has shown me what's going on. Just like whenever Jesus was dealing with the people that he was dealing with, he knew, he knew who to trust. He knew that, uh, that basically uh, um, Lazarus was going to betray him. He knew that certain people was going to, was going to render to the things that he was doing and saying, but there was others that was going to just let it nonchalantly go off their back like a duck and eventually was going to turn on their very person that they claimed that they loved or supported or back to begin with. Isn't it amazing how the demonic spirits can get in people and they'll basically turn on you like turn it like a like a dog turning on its master? Isn't it amazing? How that we see this again and again and again and again throughout history, throughout generation after generation, and we still claim that we don't know what's going on. But in reality, we actually do. This is spiritual warfare. No ifs, ands, buts about it. Just like being inundated with all the illegal people that's coming over here. It's not just being inundated. It's not just being consumed. It's not just being uh, an invasion, a physical invasion pertaining to human physical bodies. It's actual a spiritual invasion <clears throat> that is motivating these bodies towards these bodies coming over here, seeking either a more pleasurable lifestyle or they're wanting to get out of the danger that they're in in the places that they're in it, either in Mexico or South America or wherever that they're coming from. Because it's basically just a gateway, a doorway, for people to slide in to America and to bring in all the illegal drugs, fentanyl, and everything else. That way they can help to contaminate and manipulate society in the way that it's being manipulated right now. And if we're not smart enough to identify these things towards danger, 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 and figuring out what's actually occurring here, we're only going to be victimized even more if we don't wisen up and seeing just exactly what's happening here. Like I said, probably 85% of the people that's engaged in this type of violence are whack jobs. Whatever that they're doing it for, maybe their lives is in shamble, maybe they're doing it for fame, maybe they're doing it because they have a personal grudge or vendetta, maybe they're doing it because they're trying to make a statement, maybe they're doing it just because they're out of their freaking minds. 
Maybe they need to be chemically seduced in, in, a, in a padded cell somewhere in, in a mental institution to the point of them never knowing daylight from dark and never escaping out of, out of their surroundings that they basically allowed for Satan to uh, incaptivate them with. I don't know. But I do know this, it's not a 100% foolproof in stating the fact that everybody is terrorist and that everybody is a whack job. Because some of these people that are lashing out the way that they're lashing out, they're doing it because they are fearful of their country. They are fearful for their future. They are fearful for their children's future. They are fearful that this country has obviously taken the wrong step in the wrong direction. And they done a survey with this. About 72% of the people actually believes the very same thing that I'm talking about right here. That about 70 plus percent believes that we are heading in the wrong direction, in the direction that we're heading, either as a nation or as a global society. So you have to ask yourself the question, after listening to some of the remarks that I've made today on this particular event, you have to ask yourself the question, is it possible that what this individual continues to keep harping about, is it possible that this individual is actually the very one that's in contact with the reality while everybody else is out of contact with reality? You know, I was accused by the Oklahoma authorities, whenever I went out there in 2009, even though it was them that planted a bomb in the back end of my truck, even though it was them that blowed once more everything out of proportion just because they seen a red bag in the back end of my truck, thinking that they was going to use me for an example in bringing in all their fancy equipment and shutting down the town and bringing in a, a, a $250,000 robot and putting me all over news, it was them that wanted to disproportionalize that whole situation in trying to bring harm and hurt to myself while they was trying to bring glory and praise to themselves. It was them that promoted this. They had no justifiable reason for wanting to plant a bomb in the back end of my truck and blow the back end of my truck up out in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma in 2009. So something obviously was motivating them towards them doing what they was doing. Now they're going to say, oh, we was doing it because of safety issues. Really? Was that your reason? Or was you actually trying to gain brownie points with the American people towards looking like that you was some sort of a hero? It's kind of like the guy that was catching the building on fire that worked for the fire department. And then once the call nine come in towards going and putting out the fire, then all of a sudden he looked like he was a hero because he put out the very fire that he built and created himself. Is that not what I can see? What happened in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma? Hell yes! Just like I see the same thing over here in Martin, Tennessee, in Weekly County. Just like I see the same thing that happened out here in, in Kentucky. They was going to try to beat their chest like a, bunch of, like a bunch of apes. That way it would justify their services to the American people. Well, we stopped this monster, didn't we? We stopped this terrorist, didn't we? Is that what really happened? Or was it the authorities that was creating this monster that was trying to create a terrorist and because of it, it actually puts them in the category towards being terrorists. It puts them in the category of being the monsters. You see, David and I knew exactly what was going on. We knew what was going on. And there was no justification towards it continually going on, even after we had fought and went to court and was calling up the sheriff's office, sometimes as many as two or three times a month because of the activities that was going on out here. We knew exactly how that we was being illegitimately hunted and violated and could not get nobody with a robe to stand with us. A matter of fact, 
it was Tommy Moore that repeated towards me, well, Juby, you're the one that's bringing up all the, all the uh, discontent out there because you're defending yourself and you shouldn't be defending yourself if you're truly a man of God. Once more, automatically judging me, first of all, that I'm not supposed to stand up for myself. And second of all, allowing for these people out here to dominate and to bring this type of disorder into our lives. And it's not only the disorder that's coming into my personal life now, now the disorder is coming into their lives. They're being threatened. They're being harassed. They're being looked at in a different frame of mind. They're being analyzed and scrutinized because of the things that they obviously did not do right for the past 30 plus years that has put us in this very, very unpredictable position. Ever since 9-11, I still believe and I will always believe that it was a direct attack because of that in which what the United States government done during Desert Storm and Desert Shield. And I'll always believe that it was 9-11 that was financed through the Saudi Arabia government, through their finances. And I'll always believe that it was masterminded by the Luciferian Lucifer himself that is now at large in Saudi Arabia that I've been preaching now for 30 plus years that obviously people didn't want to hear, didn't want to pay any attention to the things that I was saying because obviously it, it sounded too far-fetched. You know, uh, this, this man is saying that he went through this, this, this occurrence pertaining to being electrocuted to death, having a kidney removed, falling out of the back end of a pickup truck, having a car roll over on top of me, falling off a four-story building, and we're supposed to believe all this stuff? Well, yeah, especially whenever you can prove it documentally, whenever you got the scars to prove it, whenever you got still live witnesses that knows exactly what you went through during the time that you went through what you went through. Why would you not believe that? And then they lean towards other factors. Well, he wants us to believe that two hands come out of heaven, that the Spirit of God basically intervened in that man's life whenever metal and, and, and uh, um, other types of man-made materials should have crushed him or cut him completely in half. Yeah. Once more, I've got proof to prove it towards losing nine units of blood and having to have my spleen removed. Yeah, it's been documented. Well, this individual wants us to believe that the angels of God come down out of heaven and planted a spiritual crown of thorns up on top of his head, representing the first seal being opened, and that he has already done met in these Saudi Arabian uh, profiles over in Martin, Tennessee in 1988, and believes that possibly one day he'll meet him again in face-to-face -face in the Doomsday Devil's Duel. Yeah! Now you're getting it. The message hadn't changed. The desire, the seed of, of uh, redemption for mankind through the blood of Jesus Christ has not changed pertaining to the message coming from the messenger. Hadn't changed. Not one iota. The only thing that has changed is that I've went through delay after delay after delay uh, the ministry has basically had to go through hula hoops and somersaults because of all the movement coming from the demonic forces. And they have uh, basically hindered, I guess would be the right word. They have hindered the will of God. And because they have hindered the will of God, they're now paying the circumstances and the consequences on account of it. And not only is violent activity happening with now their agencies, and I do mean agencies, but now 
their own nieces, their own nephews, their own aunts and uncles are not only becoming uh, alcoholics, but now they're becoming addicted to drugs, and now they're having children, and those children are being born deformed, or they've got uh, strong, strong um, mental disorders of challenges that they're having to, to work around. Uh, these children are, are just outlandish towards towards the way that they behave and how that they do things because they've never truly had no true love and, and no true fatherhood or motherhood in behind them for the most part. And the things that the Woodstock 50s and 60s era was a part of has now come upon all of us to the degree that now we are seeing the true tale in behind the tale of where we actually are. People wonder, well, how come you got a dragon in both of your automobiles sitting either in or on the dash? Once more, if you're going to be a dragon slayer, you're either the slayer or the dragon, but whenever it reaches the <coughs> point in time here in America, <coughs> that people can't identify the differences between their own government, either going after the bad people and supporting the good people, or trying to reassess what has went on in the past 30 plus years to the degree of knowing that they have messed up and using different tactics and different systems to be able to attack what's happening here in this spiritual warfare. It's pretty obvious why I got a dragon in my on my car. I have God has showed me in 1988. Excuse me. God has showed me in 1983, whenever I was 24 years old, of this demonic figure that pulled together. Okay, all the third of the angels that used to be angels that are now wicked demonic spirits. All of them pulled together and come to this area. And they come to this area because they knew, they knew that my life had been spared for a purpose. And the reason why I categorize them as being a spiritual dragon is because, first of all, the size that they can become whenever they all build together like that, number one. Number two, whenever you can literally feel the presence of evil coming upon you to the degree that if you're outside, you can hear this pack of dogs barking a half a mile away. Then you can hear another pack of dogs uh, barking uh, a quarter mile away. And then you can hear another pack of dogs, another family's dogs barking less than an eighth of a mile away. And you can literally feel or sense the evil entity or energy that's coming into that area that basically uh, motivated my doctor and motivated my dad toward trying to finish me off. A matter of fact, that same, that, that night before my father attacked me, probably within a week before he attacked me, I'll never forget me laying in the bed thinking to myself, what a lucky, lucky individual that I am towards me not dying and popping up daisies somewhere outside and starting to really, really become in tune with the spiritual world towards getting involved in reading the Bible and wanting to know what the heck is, what, why did those hands come out of heaven? How come How come I lost nine years of blood? How come I'm still alive? How come I got all these stables up and down my belly? But I went to bed. And I was awakened. And I was awakened in this vision. And this vision that I had was basically of a beautiful, beautiful woman that had that was unlike any other uh, woman that I'd ever seen before as far as being enticing. And she kept looking at me and kept looking at me. And she was tempting me, is what she was doing. She was, she was prepping me in, the, in this vision. And all of a sudden, she come up to my lips to kiss me. And just about the time that her lips touched my lips, 
I seen the true vision of what was trying to kiss me, which was not something pretty, but it was one of the most ugliest, fearful sights that I think that I've ever laid my eyes on. And it startled me. I awakened. It startled me. And I knew that it was only by God, through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, that saved my life. I woke up that night. Or, uh, excuse me. I woke up that night understanding what was going on. And I woke up that following morning. And I explained what had occurred to my mother. And she said, well, Dennis, you're just having a bad dream. Keep in mind, at that point in time, there was total chaos going on in the house. My father was basically in a rage because of this, because of that. He was bringing up everything in the world that, that didn't have nothing to do with, with uh, my medical particular problems that I was dealing with at that time. Matter of fact, he was trying to ridicule me towards old bones, digging up old bones, that really, that was the unappropriate time to be bringing up uh, crazy stuff like that because I was in the process of healing. I needed to be in a healing environment, not in a chaotic environment. But see, that was that was what was Satan that was working in him was causing. He was causing a chaotic environment. And uh, the next night, I went to bed. And this time, the same vision happened again, the second time. It come in the sense of the same way of a beautiful, beautiful girl that once more I got tricked into falling for her, um, for her attractiveness in this vision. But this time, whenever I fell for the same thing, it grabbed me. It grabbed me to the point that I could not breathe. I could not lift up neither arm. I could not move my head. I could not even so much as blink an eye. And the only thing that I could do at that point in time, because I was actually under this subjective, evil, demonic, wicked, uh, spell at this particular point in time, the only thing that I could do within my mind is start pleading the blood of Jesus. Satan, get thee behind me. Satan, get thee behind me. Jesus, give me the strength. Satan, get thee behind me. Satan, get thee behind me. And the Holy Spirit broke that bondage that was on my life. And the following next morning, before the morning, I got up, I made a telephone call to Almas and Oler, which was across the street, which was very, very humble in God towards their, towards their, uh, towards their commitment in the Lord Jesus Christ with Alamo Baptist Church down the road here. And I also woke up J.M. Willis. This was probably about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. And I told them, that I needed prayer, and I needed prayer now. And they both come up here. They had enough. They had enough respect for me. They didn't know for sure what was going on. But I remember J.M. laying his hands on me that night, and praying for me, and Almas praying with, with uh, J.M. Of course, my dad was freaked totally out whenever they come knocking on the door at 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning, and they had no idea that I'd done already contacted the neighbors. Well, see, that was one of the driving points that helped to agitate my biological father in the degree that about a week and a half to two weeks after that occurred towards him actually physically attacking me. He seen me... Uh, going beyond the perimeters of, of where I should have went towards calling neighbors to the attention of these demonic spirits that was entering into this house that was trying to basically uh, inundate me. 
And of course, I knew to cry out to God ever since I was a young lad, ever since I knew that the things that was going on in the household was just basically evil, the violence, the uh, the warfare that was going on. As a matter of fact, David, uh, uh, whenever I come back here, uh, one of his one of his stances was, "Juby, we're just like we're just like the uh, the survivors of the Holocaust. We made it through this." And I said, "Yes, David, we have, because it was that tormented. It was that uh, drama, uh, going through that kind of trauma. It was that traumatizing in our lives, in all of our lives." But I knew that this Luciferian Lucifer that had come to me, and this was the third time. The first, the first uh, vision or dream was whenever I was standing in front of the Antichrist, and he was wearing all purple, and he had this bow that looked just identical to my brother's bow, and he shot off an arrow, and I basically disappeared. Because like, like I said, I was really doing a lot of searching, reading the Bible, praying, trying to figure out, my God, why has my life been spared? And that's whenever the seed come into my heart towards me going to be the one to meet the Antichrist. Well, after that seed come towards me going to meet the Antichrist, that's whenever I was attacked about a week later with this evil demonic spirit that come in the form of a good-looking woman that was very attractive at first. And then about a week and a half later was whenever my father attacked me towards trying to finish me off. In the meantime... The very doctor that saved my life was from India that his people had already spent over a million dollars on his education, basically decided to take his own life. And I, to this day, feel like that he was being punished because of trying to do something good for one of his patients that the evil demonic society punished him towards because my life in 1983, according to the Luciferian Lucifer, was supposed to have ended. There wasn't supposed to be no hands come out of heaven. There wasn't supposed to be no moderation towards being operated on and, and having my spleen patched back up or removed. And I was not supposed to have survived the 1983 ordeal. A matter of fact, it was so intense that my son was attacked by him being on a bicycle, being hit by a, a uh, him being a pedestrian, being hit on a bicycle that uh, basically uh, almost ended his life. And later on that fall, my cousin, uh, his wife, her two children, and Maxie, his two children, one of them children died. The other one received third or fourth degree burns and had to stay in the victim burnt sick uh, in Houston, Texas for about a year, and the, and the wife and the two other children died in the fire over in Union City in a hotel fire. So in 1983, was our family under attack? You dig I'm right. They was under attack. In 1988, once more, was I under attack towards getting on my knees praying to God, taking 170-something pages and retranslating it over into cassette tape and making nine tapes and sending it to the White House. And in the meantime, the Lord was with me in, in translating that material because of my uh, lacking of skillful educational uh, skills and then felt the angels come out of heaven that placed a crown of thorns upon my head and then me meeting this satanic figure over in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, those things occurred. Those things actually occurred. Once more, those that get a hold of this material, it's going to be up to you of whether or not you believe that or not. And it's pretty obvious that people don't believe me because if they did, I feel like that they'd already done come to me and they would have already done submitted towards some sort of a commitment in supporting the windmill ministries. I still haven't gotten that. So as far as I'm concerned, the American people, regardless whether it be the Tennesseans or the American people in general, still talks about peace 
They talk about a revival. They talk about a revolution. But in reality, what are we seeing? We're seeing attack, attack, threat after threat. We're seeing this country being torn apart like it has never been torn apart other than in and through the Revolutionary War and possibly the Civil War. But we are heading in the direction towards duplicating that once more again in the 21st century if we are not smart enough to identify what's happening, who is in behind it, why it's happening, pertaining to the who, the what, the when, and the why, and the where. Thanks again for listening. Good luck to each and every one of us. I'm so sorry because I had to break in toward showing this particular incident that happened to the Speaker of the House, to her husband being attacked in their own home by obviously a maniac with a hammer that done some extensive damage to her husband. Um, it just, it speaks volumes about the initial period that we're in right now. Uh, Donald J. Trump did not help matters none whenever he tried to do what he done in hyping everybody up, kind of like the Jerry Springer show, and trying to be uh, some sort of a, I guess you'd call it a mediator or an instigator, a rebel, uh, uh, a rebel riser, basically, was what Donald Trump was doing. And the way that he was doing it was not only unprofessional, but it actually should be looked upon in a treasious, treasium type form because he was basically trying to get his own party to turn against the very people that elected that party to be in power that Donald Trump didn't approve of. And because of it, he was actually hoping for a knock down, drag out. One thing has led into another thing that has led into another thing. And now we can see the results of what I'm talking about, of the events that snowballed in my particular life. But now we can see the events that snowballing now in everybody's life. And I'm just wondering if the American people are going to be smart enough to figure this out and to say, you know what? Maybe it's time that we started listening to this individual because everything that he has told us that was going to occur is occurring, regardless whether it be a bloody road ahead, regardless whether it be a phenomenon of weather events drastically changing to the point of seeing all these major electrical disturbances, all the way down to the Mississippi River starting to go dry, just like he had already said, along with other factors that I have projected that was going to occur that are now occurring here in the great land of the free. Good luck to all of us as we end this program by saying God bless, God bless America, God bless our troops, and shalom.